Hi there, this is Aaron um, and I'm here with a video which is a, a new proof um, of the, the, flat, the impossibility of the Sphere Earth. Well, it's not really a new proof, is it? In fact, it's one I've heard plenty of times before. You're going to be trying to stuff a square peg into a round hole, aren't you? Let's find out, shall we? Shut up and sit down, you big bald f***. Please subscribe. Obviously, there are lots of ways to prove uh, that the, uh, the surface of the Earth has no curvature and is flat, but What's unusual about this one is um, this is really, you could describe this as a glitch in the matrix. Okay, I'm with you so far. There are many different ways to prove there's no curvature on the surface of the earth. So I've got a question for you. Why has nobody ever actually done that then? Um, because what I've found is that actually there are events in history um, which um, have been somewhat covered up, it seems. Ah, right, the it seems defense, the bedrock of all scientific arguments. You know what? It seems like I'm having a good hair day today, but I don't have a single source to back that up. And I know flat earthers know how that feels. Oof. Interesting. So these events that I'm talking about are radio broadcasts. If you, um, if you look back through the history of radio, um, obviously radio goes back far before the time that we're told there were satellites and all sorts of other things. In fact, they go back to valve technology. Hold on a second, valve technology? You mean to tell me that these guys found ancient tubes and thought they were a secret government-controlled communication network? What's next? You'll be telling us that bread existed before the internet and that's proof that the earth is shaped like a toaster? It's like finding out water is wet and concluding it's a deep state conspiracy to sell towels. The level of deduction here is just stunning. Broadcasts are made from masts and if you have a single mast broadcasting at any point on the globe, on the earth, should we say, if obviously it was a globe, imagine a single mast broadcasting, electromagnetic radiation travels in straight lines the the mast would not be able to broadcast around the curvature of the earth ah so that's the problem they think radio broadcasts are like shining a flashlight you can't see around a corner so you must not be able to hear around one either it's a solid theory if you've never used a mirror or shouted down a hallway the entire telecommunications industry is apparently built on a magical lie and not you know Physics. Somebody should probably inform everyone with a radio or a phone or, or a Wi-Fi signal that they're all just hallucinating because the signals are actually just shooting off into space. Now, if you look at, uh, if you talk to shills and so on about radio, then they will, and you say to them, how, how is it these radio broadcasts have reached, you know, all this way around the world? They will try and tell you that there's relays all over the place. Ooh, the nefarious shells. I'm probably one of them. And we've all infiltrated every radio tower, satellite and cell mast all over the world. And our dastardly plan to provide seamless long distance communication just to trick people into believing that the earth is round. Now, long distance radio communication in the 1930s, particularly for commercial, diplomatic and military messages, did rely on powerful radio telegraphy stations. And the messages were received to those stations and then retransmitted or relayed between other continents or countries. This stuff isn't hard to understand. Um, however, back in the early part of the 20th century, no such thing existed. When radio was first used, um, there were broadcasts done which are impossible in the Sphere Earth model. And the, uh, the powers that be have tried to suppress knowledge of this. Ah, so it's a historical conspiracy. I see. The powers that be not only successfully hid the shape of the Earth, but they also made sure to scrub all historical records of relay stations. Does that sound really stupid when I say it back to you? Because I can see why you've turned the comments off on your video. But it's a good thing that somebody is finally uncovering these long lost facts. I mean, who knew people in the early 20th century were just so bad at history. They couldn't even manage to write down how they bounced signals off the ionosphere without it becoming a government suppressed document. Truly the greatest cover up of all time. Basic telecommunication. So um, 
if you were to go to the Wikipedia page, for example, on the history of radio broadcasting, you wouldn't see anything suspicious. Um, if you try to look back at the early history of the British um, public broadcasts, which were known as the Empire Service, you won't really be able to find any details because um, there are people that have been working quite hard to put all this down a memory hole. A memory hole? Is that where all the inconvenient historical facts go to die? Sounds like a full-time job to me, but okay. So we've removed all mention of long-distance radio broadcasts. Now, back to the vital task of erasing every single photo of the curvature of the Earth. The Empire Service was um, the precursor to what's now known as the BBC World Service. And the Empire Service was broadcast from the UK and was broadcast to the entire British Empire. I tell you what, you've got to hand it to them. They found a public, documented and well-known historical fact and used it as the foundation for a secret globe-hiding conspiracy. That's like saying I just found out water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but I bet Big Kettle is hiding something from us. The BBC World Service is probably the single worst example you could have chosen, considering its entire purpose was to broadcast to the entire world. In order to reach all parts of the British Empire broadcasting from London, you are broadcasting across the entire known world. This is impossible unless the world is uh, flat essentially because how would any mast be able to transmit around significant parts of the curvature of the earth it's completely impossible so what you're saying then is because you don't understand how it works it must be fake and by default that makes the earth flat because that's the only way your tiny little fluff brain can even comprehend how it works now i'm picturing a room full of engineers staring at a giant globe just shaking their heads how do we get the signal to India, lads? It's impossible. Unless we tell everyone that the world is a globe and we use magic. So the Empire Service was in fact proving by its very existence um, that the sphere is impossible. Right, let me get this right now. So you are saying that because we developed the technology needed to be able to broadcast radio signals across the entire entire planet Earth, but that somehow proves that the entire planet Earth isn't a globe. However, it's very difficult to find details on this. So I've been looking for some time, um, hunting around for proof that these broadcasts were made, uh, proof which is not which is uh, still actually available in the public domain. And you didn't think to check? Now, the BBC launched the Empire Service, as it was then called, on the 19th of December 1932, and it was helped by new shortwave radio technology that allowed signals to be broadcast over vast distances. It literally took me five seconds to find all that out. The BBC have got their own website. There's loads of information about it on there. And I finally found some interesting proof when I came across a documentary from 1953 now this documentary was about transistors, um, about how the invention of transistors was going to change everything, which of course it did. Um, and in one part of the documentary, um, it starts talking about uh, broadcasts that were made from Arlington, Virginia in 1915. Um, now these were made from a, a set of masts and these radio broadcasts were picked up in Paris and Hawaii, according to um, this, uh, this documentary, um, which is produced by various firms, including, I think, General Electric. Um, and this documentary in 1953, they must have realized um, after that, that this is one of the items they'd better, um, they, they'd better hide away, because it's only recently that this 1953 documentary has been re-released and is available. Documentary about transistors? That's your smoking gun. I am honestly shocked. I thought they'd find the truth in an old map, but oh no, it was hiding in plain sight all along in a film about tiny electronic switches. And of course, they had to hide that away. You can't have people realizing that the Earth is a globe because of a grainy film strip from 1953. It's just too powerful.
So I was watching this documentary and sure enough, it started talking about these broadcasts and actually put up um, a, a little graphic map, which I've uh, snapshotted. <clears throat> and um, so you can see that they're claiming that these broadcasts were made in Arlington, Virginia, were picked up in Paris and Hawaii, significant distances around the curved surface of the earth. Um, and unless someone has a way to explain um, how these signals somehow reach their destination. I mean, no doubt shills will start talking about freak atmospheric um, phenomena and of weather conditions and God knows what. But actually, if you look at the history of these uh, ideas um, that the that the atmosphere can interact with uh, with with EM uh, radiation, you'll see that those ideas were born um, after uh, all of this probably as a way to um, to patch up the fact that it's completely impossible. You've got to admire the sheer audacity of this argument. It's like finding a light switch, but then arguing that the idea of electricity was invented later to explain the phenomenon of light. And the best part? They've already told you what the explanation is and then dismissed it immediately as a post hoc conspiracy. Now, I don't think anyone has ever produced any evidence um, that radio waves um, which you send up into the atmosphere are going to get bounced down around um, around the world, around the sphere of the world. Uh, what are they going to bounce off and how does that work and what is the evidence that there's any way for this to occur? You don't think anyone's produced any evidence? Well, that's certainly a bold claim because as it turns out, there's quite a bit. The explanation for how radio waves travel around a curved earth isn't a conspiracy, it's just science. And the most obvious evidence is the entire history of amateur radio, also known as ham radio. And for more than a century, people have been using this exact phenomenon to communicate with others around the world, bouncing signals off the ionosphere to talk to people thousands of miles away. It's not a secret. It's not a conspiracy. It's a hobby. It's just ridiculous. So I'm afraid um, they screwed up. Um, they screwed up by, uh, by being too proud of their worldwide transmissions, making a big song and dance about it, and then only too late realising that they just proved that the world is not a sphere. Ah yes, but... Oh! It's nowhere near as ridiculous as a grown man publicly claiming on YouTube that the earth is flat. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Love you. Bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. Whoa. Do you know I just read that the guy who invented the door knocker won the Nobel Prize? I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 